Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm having a play with a photo that I took in the uh, Loire Valley of France a number of years ago. And um, what I'm doing here is basically I want to bring up the detail in the chateau, but I really want the clouds to pop. I want to make some adjustments to the clouds. So I'm kind of enhancing a cloudy scene for life of bed word. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the image. This is the Chateau Amboise. Uh, and I have no idea how how terrible my French uh, pronunciation is, but um, it is in the little town of Amboise, which is just lovely, to be honest. Uh, I'm doing a little bit here in the develop uh, pane or develop module, whatever it's called, and I'm gonna just kind of make some adjustments here. All I'm really doing is kind of balancing the light, and I tend to always start here in develop just so I can kind of get these things going. Um, I've got no other edits here. I thought I had something else, but I don't. So very simple stuff just to get started. There it is before and there it is current state. And what I've been finding myself doing more and more as I've talked about in some recent videos is starting the develop tab and then pop over to local adjustments before finishing with effects. It's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's go ahead and hit local. Now I've done a couple of recent videos showing off local adjustments, which are super powerful and really fun to have. And one of the things I talked about was any adjustments here don't show up until you mask them. But somebody pointed out, actually, if you flip the mask here and just make it white, the adjustments do show up so you can actually see that as you're going, which is a great idea. I hadn't thought of that. So thank you to my lovely viewers for sharing tips and tricks. Um, I always appreciate that. And as you can see, I'm continuing to learn on one. I do not claim to know everything about it. It's super powerful, super amazing, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, the local adjustment does default to that negative exposure. I actually want to go the other way. I want to increase the exposure, and I'm going to go to about 0.35. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and hit that with a luminosity mask. And what I want to work on is kind of the foreground. So I'm going to invert that luminosity mask to kind of flip it. Let me show you the mask. Click on view, there you go. And then here's one of the cool things is you have this levels section. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of play with these levels and it's basically adjusting the, uh, uh, let's see, on the left would be shadows, this is midtones, and this far one is gonna be highlights. And all I'm trying to do is kind of collapse that brighter area so that, uh, well, the inverse of the brighter area, that doesn't really sound very correct. What I'm trying to do is isolate the foreground. That's probably a better way of saying it. I don't mind a little bit of this brightening going into those darker clouds. So I'm using a luminosity mask because it touches on all that, but you can also see it's touching on all this area. And these adjustments that I've made here in levels are helping me to kind of further isolate that. So I think something about like that looks pretty good. Let me turn off the view so you can actually see the photo. And now let me turn off the adjustment you can see how it's brightening up the clouds. The dark parts of the clouds get a little bit brighter, and of course the foreground does as well. That's looking pretty good. I'm ready to keep going. Okay, that was the only local adjustment I had, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to effects, and I'm gonna start with one of my favorites, which is dynamic contrast. And this is great for really popping that detail, which is what I want to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump small up to about a 40. Medium's going up as well to like a 35 or so. And then large is also going up to about a 35 or something like that. And once again, I'm going to create a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click lumen. And once again, I'm going to invert this because I want to work on the foreground. The thing is, I could have copied and pasted the mask from the local adjustment. The thing is, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So once again, I'm going to view the mask. So you can kind of see that. And I'm going to go play with levels again but uh, they're gonna be slightly different than they were last time. So, and honestly, this is just experimentation. There is no rhyme or reason, or I should say formula is probably a better way of saying it. There's no formula for, you know, oh, do this with levels. It is frankly just experimentation for me. And all I do is I do that till it looks like I'm kind of adjusting the areas I want to adjust. I click view again so I can see it in action. And I think that looks pretty good. What I'm trying to do is adjust these clouds. I'm trying to give it a little bit of pop in the sky, not very much, just a little bit and more of that pop in the foreground. And that's what I was able to do by luminosity mask and then inverting it and then adjusting those levels. Okay, now we're moving on. I'm gonna get another filter and this one is the photo filter. And here what I wanna do is actually the hue of 240 and the amount of 20 actually looks pretty good, but I'm gonna apply this with a luminosity mask because what I wanna do is create a little bit of that blue look 
in the sky, and I think I just did that perfectly. So let me show you the luminosity mask. As you recall um, for masking, white reveals, black conceals. So now that I show you this view mode where it's gray, gray gets a little bit of it, the whiter or brighter parts get more of the blue, and the darker or black parts get you know little or none of it. So luminosity mask comes in really handy in times like that where you're trying to create a little bit of a color cast across the photo but not completely across it. So while I'm at it, I'm actually gonna take the opacity down just a little bit. I think maybe about a 75. Another nice thing you can do is adjust the opacity of these filters. So let me turn that off. There it is before, and there it is with photo filter, with the luminosity mask, with an opacity reduction and things like that. All I'm trying to do is create a little bit of blue in the brighter areas, which is mostly the clouds. That's just personal preference, by the way. I just like that kind of look or that kind of color on my gray cloudy days. I like them to have a little bit of blue. To me, it just seems better looking than when it's just kind of gray, uh, but that's just personal preference. So this is something I do uh, kind of just for the heck of it. The thing is, if you have a sunset, you could take a photo filter, come in over here with like one of these other settings or just adjust the colors individually, do a similar thing to pop those warm colors and tones in a sunset. Okay, speaking of sunset, there's a filter I'm gonna use here called Sunshine, and I'm gonna click on that, and that gives a nice little pop to the photo. I'm gonna go up a little bit here to about a 65. I am gonna take the warmth down. I'm going to like a negative 25 here, so kind of cooling it off, which is creating a little bit more of that blue look in the photo, which again, I just kind of like. Saturation's going to about a 10, and this is just, it's just a nice pop to the photo. So let me show you, there's the before. It's a little bit more muted, a little bit less colorful, and a little bit less bright. And that sunshine filter, I think gives it a nice little pop. I think the colors come a little bit uh, more alive, they get a little bit richer, just a little bit brighter overall, a little bit higher contrast. So one more time, there it is before sunshine, and there it is after. And clearly not a sunshiny day, but I just like the filter. I think it worked well here. Now here's another thing you can do. If you remember back here a couple of filters ago, I used dynamic contrast to apply some detail into the photo, which went everywhere because I used a luminosity mask, including some parts of the sky. You can see the difference there. So here's a couple of things to think about if you want to um, either smooth or uh, you know crunch up the sky. If you're the kind of person that wants to have a little bit more ominous looking sky, you could come in here with another filter, let's say HDR look, and maybe just come in and just kind of crank up some of these details, and I'm just kind of overdoing it on purpose uh, for effect. Now you gotta be careful, as you can see, that's bringing out a lot of noise. I can see some spots in my uh, sky that I didn't see before, but you could come in with HDR look, come in here, I'm gonna invert, I'm gonna click on AI Quick Mask, and I'm gonna come in here, and let's say I'm gonna increase my mouse, something about like that, and AI Quick Mask allows me to just select sections of the photo, that I wanna drop or keep. So I'm gonna drop that and I'm gonna keep the sky. So I'm just gonna come in here and just basically you're saying, you know, hey, this big area that's green, I wanna keep this filter there and the area that's red, I don't want it uh, there. I wanna drop it. So you do that, creates a basically a perfect mask. You can say you're done and this HDR look has now been added to the sky but nowhere else. So there it is before and after, that's if you want that kind of look in the sky. I do not, it's just an idea. I actually prefer to have a little bit smoother sky, so I'm gonna say dynamic contrast, and I'm just gonna pull all these kind of to the left and kind of smooth that out, and this is something I do a lot. And then once again, I'm gonna go in and get a AI quick mask. Click there, I'm in keep mode, I'm gonna increase my mouse just because it's a big area and that makes it easier to cover so much of it. There we go, and then in the drop section, that's gonna be down below. Shrink my mouse a little bit. Come in here and just paint over the land and just basically tell on one, I don't want that to be applied there. So once again, click on that AI quick mask. I mean, fantastic job. I mean, it's just, honestly, it's unreal how good that is and how quick it works. And if you look at your mask, there you go. I mean, look at the trees. I mean, goodness gracious. Now it's the very tippity tops of these spires have been missed, but I mean, you can refine it if you want to. I don't really care, I'm just kind of showing this as an example, but that's an alternative way to enhance that sky. I tend to like a little bit smoother skies, so I tend to do stuff like this instead of that HDR look, but if you wanted a crunchier sky, you could try dynamic contrast going to the right, or that HDR look to the right, and then you use AI Quick Mask. Um, I tend to like dynamic contrast, negative, applied to the sky, but you can see how quickly and easily it smoothed out that sky. 
There it is before, and there it is current state. I'm gonna hide the mask, and that's really my entire photo. So let me show you the before and after. Here's the click the preview. That's what we started with, and that's where we are. Been able to kind of brighten and add detail to the foreground. I've been able to add some color, some pop to the overall image, uh, color specifically to the sky, smooth it out, that kind of thing. And if I show you this sliding before and after window, you can see, I mean, it's a massive difference in the photo and really quite quick and easy to do with all these tools and the powerful masks that exist in On One. That's how I enhance skies and some tips and tricks, maybe some ideas for how you can do that in your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next video and adios.